All right, what's up, y'all? Take a fan here. As I was about to tell today's video, here to showcase the best lockdown build you can make for NBA 2K24 Comp Pro Am. Now, in today's video, you can see mainly we have listed the six foot seven with the max wingspan, and that's going to be the meta one that most people are running. Now, the other suggestion I wanted to give you guys is something that has a little bit of hybrid ability to it, where you could defend the interior, play better rebounding, be a little bit bigger, and just take up a little bit more space while still keeping the same types of shooting ratings that are going to be demanded for you to have the best jump shots that you can, including the Tracy McGrady base that we'll be talking about a lot. In this video as well so i hope you all enjoy if you do for the drop a like sub new time noties all good stuff and like always try this one to 2000 likes all right so let's take a look at the first build as you can see we have a six foot seven lock 250 on the weight competitively there's not a huge reason to do this it's more it's more so just for the body shape and this is as heavy as you can go on a small forward build if you were to go to just settle for that 95 strength as you can see the only difference that you're losing out on is literally just the acceleration for slippery slippery off ball to gold instead of silver but we don't really care about that personally so <laughs> what you're going to be seeing instead is is the 6'7", 250 weight, 7'4 wingspan. The 7'4 wingspan allows you enough mid-range rating to get 87, which is exactly what you need to get Tracy McGrady base. It's the best jump shot in the entire game, hands down, between guards, swings, and bigs. And obviously, you happen to be a swing, so 87 is what we're shooting for, literally just to get that base. It's the main whole reason. Now, along the way, with the 86, you do still get open looks and stuff like that, too. So it's not a complete lost cause going this high in the mid-range. Not to mention, you can still create pretty solid out the corner with a build like this. Now, you guys may also be wondering, why am I not putting 40 speed with ball in this build? We've been preaching that for a lot of the year. Turns out, you make a small forward, you get normal dribble style by default. If you make a shooting guard, you get pro dribble style by default. So, take all this information in as you would like. You can only make this build at a small forward because if you make it a shooting guard, you can't achieve the, the strength that we want for the immovable enforcer on Hall of Fame. Anyway, again, offensively creating with this build, it's going to be enough to cut out the corner. 50 dunk will give you like Manu Ginobili dunk package and even CJ McCollum dunk package is really good in this game. It's kind of crazy for that matter, but 50 dunk is good enough to, to cut out the corner and still dunk reliably and 65 standing dunk will give you three different packages between an athletic one at 65 and then at 40 and 45, you get the basic ones as well. So it's a decent threshold to hit as far as that goes. Essentially, you're not meant to be too much of a cutter, but it's going to be enough. And again, it's going to be a really good lethal shooter for that matter with this mid range and three point upgraded. The pass act, good enough. Ball handle, good enough for the normal SIGs. And again, we don't even need 40 speed of ball to get normal dribble style. So that's a big deal. Now, you may be also wondering if you followed the channel, Laker, why is the interior D so high in this stuff? You've been preaching even 61 interior D on bigs. So here's the thing. When you play five out players in this game, and I'm not here to just completely like, you know, use Joe as the only example, but there will be people who utilize the post in these situations. And you as the peer lock are expected to be the, the guy on defense. Now, the last thing you want is to have to get switched off of their five out ISO just because you can't guard a post spin. Simple as that, right? So I know it's not only because of that, because also I want to talk about defensive versatility to say that you could even still switch on to bigs potentially. And I gave it 60 defensive rebounds strictly for box out beast and rebound chaser. Rebound chaser, not quite as much, but box out beast on bronze. Don't sleep on it too much. I'm here to tell you with 95 strength and the bronze box out beast, it's going to be a good combination to at least halt the centers in the, some of those situations where maybe you as the lock get switched on to the big and then your power forward who was guarding the big gets switched on to the point guard. In this situation, you have the interior to hang in my opinion. And again, positioning is mainly what matters in terms of stopping dunk meters and stuff like that. But with your lack of size, I do like definitely advocate for a little bit of interior defense anyway, if you're trying to switch on to seven footers and stuff consistently. And with this, you're actually looking pretty good in terms of your switch switchability capability, so to say. But anyway, Meta locks that you may typically see are going to have 98 perimeter defense. All you achieve with that, though, is literally just pick Dodger on Hall of Fame instead of gold. And in my opinion, it's not worth it. You already at 94 get Hall of Fame challenger, ankle braces, and workhorse. It's a major, major cap to go for. And as you can see, all the things that you can unlock because you're going that low are things like 87 mid-range to get that Tracy McGrady base. 79 three-pointer, very doable, good speed. You have the 95 strength of the immovable enforcer. If you wanted to go to 90, it's acceptable and understandable for sure but 95 that half movable and the the weight and size that you have on a build like this it's insane and then you pair that in with 99 steel i know we've been talking a little bit about the lack of value of the 99 steel too because as you can see if you even drop down to 98 you're 96 overall this costs nearly three overall points pretty much and then the next threshold to hit would probably be like 96 or 95 
for just the interceptor if you want it to be a mediocre steel build obviously that's what we're gonna be showcasing the next one with the 6.8 so i'm showcasing this as the 6.7 pure lock as the pure perimeter defender 94 prim 99 steel and then good enough block to be able to get just bronze anchor and again good interior defense for the hybrid post score five out style and stuff like that and just the switchability versatility as well and then again 60 60 rebound for the bronze box out beast bronze rebound chaser the acceleration is enough for as you can see silver fast feet it, because we went so high on the weight we aren't able to achieve the gold fast feet if you want to find a nice threshold between the two of them if you go to the level of where you get 90 strength aka drop your weight to like about 230 something you're going to end up at 90 strength of 77 acceleration and that's what's going to get you the gold fast feet as well so if you would prefer the fast feet you can have it over the hoff movable but i'm here to tell you guys right now hoff movable on these blocks is a problem it's pretty insane and then as you can see at 60 vertical paired with the block being 79 you get bronze pogo bronze chase down i figure why not honestly between utilizing this build in maybe different aspects than just comp pro m2 you may actually find some utility in those two badges also if you guys didn't know i'm pairing up with the nba 2k lab this year so you can use code laker for 20 percent off at checkout at their website that's nba 2k lab.com on this website is all types of really good statistical jump shot information you can also test the jumpers on their website too. plug the controller straight into your phone or to your pc you can get early green late it'll tell you where you need to adjust on that jump shot or if you don't know what jumper you want to run you just go to their jump shot recommender you punch in your height the jump shot rating that you're working with and then based on the milliseconds of timing that you get it'll recommend you a jump shot so again if you want to use code laker for 20 percent off at checkout that's nba2klab.com appreciate you guys and we'll get back to the video but anyway that's all for this build so on to the 6.8 which is going to be a little bit more of a hybrid defender you're going to be able to you know stay with the bigs and the guards and as you can see this one's a little bit lower on the weight where the strength is only going to be 84. this is going to be the situation where you have gold box out beast with like silver removable enforcer it's not amazing when it comes to the perimeter defensive aspects of like being bumpy and physical and like big and stuff like that but the thing is being the 6'8 with the 7'4 wingspan you're looking at once again the mid-range rating being really good you're not spending as many attribute points on the strength and the uh, steel and stuff like that too so we're finding a way to implement a little bit more offense here so as you can see with this build we got 89 driving dunk for pro contact dunks you have even also good vertical and good like rebounding even still to go with this so with 85 d board you have silver chaser and gold box out beast your versatility shines a little bit more as someone who can play hybrid between a lock and a back end or in a situation where maybe you want to run two of these builds and maybe the second one has a little bit more defensive rebound where you ideally set it up to play on the back end and then all of a sudden you have the, the ability to play sides consistently between the two of them i know once again you're probably wondering well they could you just vouch for 82 interior defense why not in this build well we got a lot of the things that we're trying to go for with this like the pro contact dunks with this i'm here to tell you right now there may be some situations where you're like dunk metering out the corner with a build like this and don't sleep on once again the normal dribble style coming out the corner with that it could be ca pretty capable to be honest with you, whether you have an inside on the team or not and if you are running a more five out style offense oh this could be really lethal having 89 dunk out the corner i also ended up giving it 70 driving layup you, you end up pretty much literally right there just off the dunks you might as well go up a tick for that bronze fearless gold pro touch makes sense to do in my opinion close shot minimum and then 65 standing dunk again just for some packages and you know you combine this with like the fact that it can catch lobs you're on the back doors consistently if you get crafty out the corner with a with a build like this i made this to be something that could fit the masses a little bit more like more of you guys out there who are playing with builds that maybe aren't set up just to be tailored to be 100% meta but could be right in the right hands now what we've also done in the past is give builds like this let's say 85 post control because then you can utilize the post fades and the post tops and stuff like that if you want to make any slight revisions on a build like this i would say you could probably go ahead and negotiate a little bit between the driving dunk and the in the vertical i believe this is what you need exactly to be able to get the pro contact dunks off two now off one in my opinion are a lot better but if you want it to be kind of a do-it-all as you can see it's pretty much the only type of investment you'd have to make is just to end up with 87 driving dunk with just enough vertical i believe for the pro contacts off to 78 is good enough for and you, suddenly you're looking at a post scoring slashing mid-range shot creating you know like with the post scoring as well being the post fades and you can still have the normal dribble style because we already mentioned you need 40 speed of ball but if you're a small forward you get it by default 
And then again, you have the bronze anchor. And then the rebounding is enough for the gold box out beast, silver rebound chaser. I actually ended up taking the offense rebound down to 40 instead of 41. It's where the extra attribute points were on the original way I made the build. So taking that down gets you the free throw back to 83. It's looking good. I think this is actually a very viable 6-8 build that most people can make. Anything I've already shown in the past, though, is also another good version of these 6-8 type locks. You can't go wrong with the 6-8s, in my opinion. There's so many ways to make them. In my opinion, this is the best one, though, because between having to get the prim D to 94, you have to go down on the weight quite a bit and also because you go so low on the weight you have the 99 stamina which gets you the 94 feet and the half workhorse as well it just depends are you okay with 84 strength obviously silver removable is not hall of fame and between the differences of the two builds like how we're showing the lightweight 6.8 versus the heavy 6.6.7 the heavy 67 obviously is going to have nearly the same speed at only 84. I mean, you're only down two speed for being an inch taller with this build, but again, you're down 11 strength at the same time too. But same acceleration, you know, with the silver fast feet. The the whole point of this build, like I'm saying, is versatility in the rebounding aspect. Whereas we didn't have that with the 67, because I just think it might be a little bit more troll to put D board on a 67. With the 68, you're looking a lot more switchable in terms of your versatility with it. But this isn't the type of post score defender that I would have envisioned like originally. Now, to be fair. If you ever want, you could just take the dunk down to the 50 like I had in the other build and then boom, just pop the interior D up the same way we had it with the original 6-7 mold. But I wanted to give people a little bit more of a vision of something they could make to be a lockdown while still being a lethal offensive threat. And again, between Tracy McGrady base and then the good three-pointer as well with the 80, the pro contacts off two or off one if you wanted to make it the original way I made. And then to still even feature in 85 post control with Hoff, post fade phenom, silver unpluckable, you still get the drop step or post spin and stuff like that too. And you could still get kind of weird with the contact dunks out of the post even for that matter. But Anyway, just wanted to give you guys a couple options. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on noties, all good stuff. And like always, try this one to 2,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put 6-7 or 6-8 in the comments so it supports you made all the way through. Just rep whichever the two builds you prefer. So, I appreciate you guys watching. If you want any more insight on pro-am builds like this, these videos have been doing pretty good. So, we're going to do the shooting guard and power forward videos as well. I know I've been kind of spamming them at this point. This is like the third one in a row between point guard, center, and now lockdown as well. But... You guys seem to be liking them quite a bit, and I, I do appreciate just, you know, offering you this insight on what the comp players do, but also at the same time, my own little spins on some of them, what can be kind of crafty, and some people will call invalid when it comes to the comp players, but what could give you the edge on them as well, like a kind of leg up, so to say. But anyway, that's all for video. Hope you all enjoyed, and that, take easy, man. Peace.